Good morning, traders. Today is Friday, August 26th. My name is Charles, and this is the Pirate Traders live stream. All right, well, my apologies. I'm running a bit late this morning. I haven't had a chance to really prepare, so I'm going to have to do my analysis here live in front of you guys. Um, so basically, what did we have yesterday? Well, we had a continuation of the new momentum to the upside. We had value overlapping to higher the day before. That was a sign the momentum to the downside was over. So getting value completely higher yesterday is a sign of new momentum to the upside. And that is, of course, bullish. The spike up at the end of the day that we had yesterday, that was also bullish as a sign of a continuation of that trend higher. So that is very bullish. Uh, we are opening here today right on top of yesterday's high, um, which is, well, we're open, we're right on it. So we'll have to wait, wait another three minutes to find out if we're going to open above or below um, yesterday's high. Both are, bear, are bullish, right? Opening inside the previous day spike is bullish for continuation to the upside. The only thing more bullish than opening inside the previous day spike is opening above it. So if we did open with a little bit of a gap up, that would be even more bullish. So this is just a really, really bullish market here, looking for continuation to the upside. Uh, when I step back and look at the uh, daily candles, we are pushing right up into the resistance of this previous downtrend line, which is what kind of halted the momentum yesterday. So that's what we will have to work through. Uh, which, of course, if we can get back to the overnight high, we will have done. Once we work our way back through this resistance here from this trend line, we are back inside that previous balance area, and we're then looking for a trade to the opposite end of balance. So again, very, very bullish. So all of these things I've discussed so far are bullish. Let's talk about a bearish narrative. Let's talk about a rejection here that fails and starts to pull back down. Uh, the first indicator that that is going to happen would be that we test the top of this or the base of the spike from yesterday at 41.85. Uh, if that fails, I'd be looking for support there. If that fails, I would be bearish um, because there's so much weakness. This is often what you see when you have a balance area that the market is going to spend a few days grinding up and down in. You'll see tons and tons of weakness left behind on the way up towards the balance area high. So to me, if we break the base of the spike now, uh, we're heading down to start trying to repair this weakness. So I would be looking to get short and monitor for continuation to the downside. So that is if we break uh, 4185. If you wanted to be super cautious, you could wait till we get below the overnight low 4180 and then look for resistance there for continuation lower. Uh, but I think pretty much the base of this spike, just like it did in the overnight, should hold once again if we're going to keep going higher. And if we're not going to keep going higher, then all this weakness needs repair. Okay? So I am bullish, um, and I'll get bearish if we break 85 and start to head lower. Um, and everything I just said goes out the window at 10, p or 10 a.m., 30 minutes from now, when uh, the Fed chair starts to speak, he could say something that could instantly change the market. So even if we open and we're bullish and the market looks like it wants to rocket ship higher, he could say something that could cause that to completely reverse. He could say something that could cause the market to just go sideways the rest of the day. And so we, we really can't predict beyond um, 10 a.m. what will happen. But for now, the market is bullish. We opened inside the spike, which is bullish, but because we opened inside the previous day's range, we are expecting chop. So I'll be looking for support right here around 41.95, and then to see, can we get above yesterday's high? If we do, do we find support there? In which case I would be bullish for continuation to the upside. John Q, slowest open I've ever seen? Bro, we're 10 seconds into it. <laughs> Not even one minute in, dude. Give it a second. Mm. 
Okay, so we're looking for support in here around 95. For a bounce to head back up and see if we can test yesterday's high. Also, it's worth uh, noting that today's high is now weak because it is exactly at the closing price from yesterday and also because it is just one TPO off from yesterday's high. So that slightly increases the odds. We're going to get some chop to head back up there. It's also worth noting that the overnight inventory is completely neutral. They closed almost exactly the same price that they opened. So they really, you know, they're not holding inventory one direction or another this morning. So if the market does pick a direction and start to move first thing, we know that is new buyers or sellers. So we can keep an eye on the ticks here and see if they start to push, start to trend higher or start to trend lower from the zero line. That'll give us an indication of the momentum. Yoda, scroll on back, brother. Scroll on back and rewatch those first five minutes. If you ever tune in to this stream and you didn't see the first five minutes, always start there. It is worth, I know it means you're going to miss a trade that you could take over the next five minutes because you're busy watching the live stream, but go back and watch it. It'll give you everything you need for the rest of the day. And it'll tell you how I feel. David V in the house. Good morning. The Shah. Good morning to you. Brian is here. Welcome. Cyrus, Arthur, Philip, Ed, Mateus. Mateus says, my first time pirate trading a spike. <laughs> Can't hardly wait. Yes, sir. You know, as long as we stay above the base of that spike, this market is bullish. John Lash, good morning to you. WSS gap to fill to 42.11. And 42.02. Uh, no, no gap. You mean the gap above? Uh, there's a gap up to 42.21. Yeah. But first order of business is can we get above yesterday's high and find support? Then that gap comes into play. Uh, 
RK Leon, good morning to you. Novice Trader is here. David Glass, Daniel, Fighter Pilot, Nick G, T Wark, Brian, RK, Jack Spratt, and John Q. Welcome, welcome. John Lash, Michigan Sentiment and Powell speaking at 10. Is the Michigan Sentiment at 10 as well? Yeah, we can expect a little flurry of activity from that. And then, you know, while Powell is speaking at any moment, he could say something that could cause a flurry of activity. David V, unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. You're forgiven this once, but don't you dare do it again. Good morning, Nap, MK, Nicholas, Hal, and MBQ. BBQ tried to short, missed it by a tick. That happens to you a lot. Maybe start putting your orders one tick lower than you uh, normally would. You might start getting more fills. Uh, John, is there a video on your setup and the software you use? Um, not really. But I talk about it all day, every day live. Um, I have an e-course and there's a link in the description. Uh, it costs like 130 bucks and that will teach you everything that's available. Or you could just watch these live streams for free for the first hour every day. I talk about all the concepts here. But since you're new, I'll just give you the basic rundown. What you're looking at over here on the left is a market profile chart. It's a way to display the same information you see in candlesticks in three dimensions. So you can see both how much time a market spends at a particular price level and how much volume it brings in on that particular price level. And the nice thing about looking at the market in three dimensions like this is that it allows you to um, very easily recognize something which is called the two-way auction process. So all market moves that ever happen for any reason on any market on earth is always happening because at that particular moment, there are either more people that want to buy or more people that want to sell. And I know that that sounds like an overly simplistic way of looking at things, but I have found it gives me all the edge I need to make money on a daily basis trading the ES. Just asking myself the question, who is in charge? The buyers or the sellers? I don't need to know why. I don't need to know when. I don't need to know any of those things. I just need to know who's winning, the buyers or the sellers. If the buyers are winning, I know I want to go long. If the sellers are winning, I know I want to go short. And the market profile software makes it really easy for me to recognize that process. So I'll give you an example. Right now, I see it as CHOP. I see it as 50-50 buyers and sellers because of the information that's being given to me. We had a spike up at the end of the day yesterday. We opened inside the spike. That was a signal the market wants to go up. The market instead went down, but it created good taper. So that tells me there were buyers waiting to push that market back up. So that is still bullish. Even though the market went down, even though I thought the market wanted to go higher and it went lower, it is still giving me the confidence to know I'd rather be a buyer because of the support from the taper and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of these things and you'll hear me talk about them in the days to come. Um, that's what I do. So right now my main focus is just, I want to find support above this level, 41.85. I don't want us to pass back below there. As long as we stay above there, I assume the sellers are in charge of the market. And the proof that the sellers are in charge of the market will be if they can get above yesterday's high and then come back down and find support. To me, that would be an area to look to go long for continuation higher.
John, I'm currently reading Stottermeyer. There you go. Going with the OG, the original gangster, Stottermeyer himself. Daniel, you mean buyers are in control of the market? Yes, sir. Buyers are in control. They took control two days ago. And we got our signal when we saw that value was overlapping to higher. We knew that the momentum was over. The sellers were done selling. And when the sellers are done selling, guess what happens? The buyers start buying. And so the buyers took charge yesterday. That was confirmed by the fact that the value was completely higher than the previous day. And the fact that at the end of the day, we had a spike up and the buyers are still in charge as evidenced by the fact that we opened inside that spike. So now we still have momentum up. So Papa Pal is going live here in about 15 minutes. Uh, when that happens, I will play that video here on the channel so we can watch it together. But if it feels like it's kind of just turning into like a lecture and not really any, you know, important uh, information being shared, I'll probably cancel it out um, and just focus on the market. But we will at least give Pal a chance to see if he can hook us with some new information. The Shah, he's going to tell us about his favorite cuisines and recipes. Uh, he doesn't come across as the guy who likes to cook to me. Exactly. Steak, potatoes, butter, <laughs> nothing else. I'm too busy making decisions about the future of the world. I can't be thinking about what I'm going to eat.
<laughs> Jason, he's definitely on Metamucil. <laughs> it's good for you, man. Fiber. Man, it is so weird the way every day the NQ and the ES seem to like create highs at exactly the same second and place on the charts. It's happened the last three days in a row. So exactly the same as the ES, NQ has a weak high, weak because it's one tick off from yesterday's high and at or, or one tick off from yesterday's close and right at yesterday's high. Um, they are right now testing the base of their spike. So this is where you're looking for support. Literally right where we are now. So can they get back up through the opening price and then head above yesterday's high? Uh, if this level breaks, you've got a little more support here around 13,089 for support there. But if that breaks, I would get bearish to look lower. Uh, I haven't been tracking weak references on the queue, but I'd be willing to bet we have a bunch. Just like the ES. So this is the moment for the buyers to step in. Ben, time for a poll. What will ba Powell bring to the table? Now, do you mean table in a figurative sense? Or do you mean literally, if you had a dinner party, what would he bring as food? John, what's the Trader's Book Club? Well, it's funny you should ask. Uh, yeah, the Trader's Book Club is a new little project I'm starting um, where we're going to all get together once a month and talk about a book that has some sort of relation to markets or trading. Um, the first meeting ever is next Wednesday. And the book is Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. If you click on that link uh, and then sign up for the email list, you'll get an email with the invite to join that Zoom call. You'll be able to join the call where you can have face-to-face -face conversation with other people, or you could just watch it on a live stream as well. If you'd rather just be a creep and watch from a distance. Cyrus, should I press the thumbs up button to thumbs up or not to thumbs up? That is the question. Okay. The NQ is now testing the 20 moving average on the 15 minute candles. There are bots that like to buy there. So you might be looking for a little bounce. If not, it would be slightly more bearish to see. Corbin, the game, how to become a pickup artist. Actually, the title is the game infiltrating a secret society of pickup artists. Uh, hello. Yeah, no, I'm actually a big Neil Strauss fan. I love that book. Or I don't love the book. I love the way he writes. Jay Trader, are you doing the book club meeting on your vacation? I am. 
Don't let them tell you I'm not a workaholic. But to be fair, it's it's an hour of talking to people. It's not really work. Thank you, Lana and Phoenix. Appreciate you. James, no construction today, Charles. No, they're still here. They're just being much more quiet today. done drilling whatever they had to drill ed where am i going uh well i'm spending the first half just here in new york it's my first uh like summer in the city so i just want to spend a few days enjoying it during the day Let's check out some museums and parks and shit like that um basically play tourists in my own city and then on wednesday or sorry thursday i'm heading to my mom's house for a few days in wisconsin Get some fam time in. Novice traders, buyers front running yesterday's high. You know, I wouldn't really describe this as buyers doing anything. I would just describe this as like a lack of sellers. The way every time the price pushes down, it tapers. I don't know if you guys have noticed that literally all day. Every push down, it creates taper. Pushes down, taper. Pushes down. So it's just like every push, we just run out of sellers. That's also why the ticks are just kind of bouncing right at the zero line. It's kind of like nobody's taking charge yet. Probably waiting to see if Powell says something that scares the market. And does your mom call you pirate trader? <laughs> no, my mom hates the name. My mom's like a super straight edge, like Christian person. She wanted me to be like, she was like, why can't you call your company like traders for the Lord or something like that? Why does it have to be pirate? Great advice, Jay, Tra Jay Trader.
Ooh, El Diablo trading is a good name. Disciples of the market, also good. What would Jesus short? Guys, we are killing it in the chat today with these jokes. Where are you every other day? Asterix. Jesus would short homes. Really? Would Jesus short homes? In Jesus' name, we trade. Amen. <laughs> oh, that's great. You came here to teach us how to love and support one another. Now bless me as I go. Take people's money. <laughs> All right, well, there's your uh, Michigan numbers coming out. You're bought based on that. Or is yours? Please come to the podium. Thank you, Peter, and good morning, everyone. Uh, Esther, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here today. At past Jackson Hole conferences, I have discussed broad topics, such as the ever-changing structure of the economy and the challenges of conducting monetary policy under high uncertainty. Today, my remarks will be shorter, my focus narrower, and my message more direct. The Federal Open Market Committee's overarching focus right now is to bring inflation back down to our 2% goal. Price stability is the responsibility of the Federal Reserve and serves as the bedrock of our economy. Without price stability, the economy does not work for anyone. In particular, without price stability, we will not achieve a sustained... Okay, so breaking the uh, spike that I told you about, and uh, breaking below the overnight low, those are a little bit bearish. They increase the odds that uh, the market is going to have to head down and repair some of this weakness we left behind yesterday. But it is all still part of this bot that is reacting to the news and reacting to, to Powell speaking. So I'm, I'm putting up the bearish banner here as, you know, 
probability wise, we're now likely to head down and try to repair some of this weakness, but it can reverse and head back up. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that once, once it's absorbed the news. So we're now monitoring for continuation lower. If we repair the first week reference, is that enough to reverse? If not, we look to repair the next and so on and so forth. As long as we keep pushing lower. growth rates of 2021, which reflected the reopening of the economy following the pandemic recession. While the latest economic data have been mixed, in my view, our economy continues to show strong underlying momentum. The labor market is particularly strong, but it is clearly out of balance, with demand for workers substantially exceeding the supply of available workers. Inflation is running well above 2%, and high inflation has continued to spread through the economy. While the lower inflation readings for July are certainly welcome. Again, just want to make the point to clarify to everybody, this feels very scary. It feels very emotional. It feels like the world is coming to an end. It is not, folks. We're just squeezing out the people who had gone long looking for a, for a big push right now. We're just liquidating them. So we're giving stronger hand buyers a chance to step into the market here. So, you know, of course, it's bearish on the intraday at the moment. But as soon as this momentum is done, they can turn right back around and head right back up. This is a liquidation break, as classic as they can be. And those strengthen a market. Next target to the downside, the repair of 4159. Of the incoming data and the evolving outlook. At some point, as the stance of monetary policy tightens further, it likely will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases. Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive policy stance for some time. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. Committee participants' most recent individual projections from the June SEP showed the median federal funds rate running slightly below 4% through the end of 2023. Participants will update their projections at the September meeting. Our monetary policy deliberations and decisions build on what we've learned about inflation dynamics, both from the high and volatile inflation of the 1970s and 1980s, and from the low and stable inflation of the last quarter century. And in particular, we're drawing on three important lessons that I'll highlight. The first lesson is that central banks can and should take responsibility for delivering low and stable inflation. Okay, I'll be looking for a bounce here. We just repaired the last week reference and we are pushing into previous support. So we're looking for the market to push up here, try to backfill some of this uh, thin volume. Today we regard these questions as settled. If they continue to trade lower without doing so, it would be more bearish. It is true that the current high inflation is a global phenomenon and that many economies around the world face inflation as high or higher than seen here in the United States. It's also true, in my view, that the current infl high inflation in the United States is the product of strong demand and constrained supply, and that the Fed's tools work principally on aggregate demand. None of this diminishes the Federal Reserve's responsibility to carry out our assigned task of achieving price stability. There is clearly a job to do in moderating demand to better align with supply we are committed to doing that job. The second lesson is that the public's expectations about future inflation can play an important role in setting the path of inflation over time. Today, by many measures, longer-term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored. That is broadly true of surveys of households, businesses and forecasters, and of market-based measures as well. But that is not grounds for complacency with inflation having run well above our goal for some time. If the public expects that inflation will remain low and stable over time, then absent major shocks, it likely will. Unfortunately, the same is true of expectations of high and volatile inflation. 
During the 1970s, as inflation climbed, the anticipation of high inflation became entrenched in the economic decision-making of businesses and households. The more inflation rose, the more people came to expect it to remain high, and they built that belief into wage and price decisions. As former Chairman Paul Volcker put it, at the height of the great inflation in 1979, inflation feeds in part on itself, so part of the job of returning to a more stable and more productive economy must be to break the grip of inflationary expectations. Okay, so as we backfill this second uh, low volume node, there you go. We're looking for resistance around the half back here. And this is where we'll find out, was this just a liquidation break? And we're going to head right back up. Or is this a liquidation break with new money selling, piling on? Just a liquidation break would be very, very bullish. But if they start to get new sellers piling on here, that is bearish as a sign that they want to continue to take the market lower. So important level right here around halfback. It's also the overnight low, second reason to be resistance. Just today. The longer the current bout of high inflation continues, the greater the chance that expectations of higher inflation will become entrenched. And that brings me to the third lesson, which is that we must keep at it until the job is done. History shows that the employment costs of bringing down inflation are likely, likely to increase with delay as high inflation becomes more entrenched in wage and price setting. The successful Volcker disinflation of the early 1980s followed multiple failed attempts to lower inflation over the previous 15 years. A lengthy period of very restrictive monetary policy was ultimately needed to stem high inflation and to start the process of getting inflation down to the low and stable levels that were the norm until the spring of last year. Our aim is to avoid that outcome by acting with resolve now. So these lessons are guiding us as we use our tools to bring inflation down. We are taking forceful and rapid steps to moderate demand so that com it comes into better alignment with supply and to keep inflation expectations anchored. We will keep at it until we're confident the job is done. Thank you. All right. I am neutral. All right. As Powell finishes speaking, that was just a liquidation break. And liquidation breaks actually strengthen a market. Now that Papa Pal has finished speaking, all the fear is gone. So we squeezed out all the weak hands who were just gambling. They were just guessing. We got the news. It wasn't bad. Oh, man. Above yesterday's high. Woo! Things are about to get real. Next target to the upside, gap fill to 20, 42.21. Yeah, so you, you squeezed out all the gamblers that were just guessing the market was going to go higher. You brought in the good, strong hand buyers, right, who were willing to buy in fear. They were willing to buy while everyone else was panicking, while everybody else thought the world was coming to an end. They were strong. They stepped in. So now why on earth would they take profits? They can just sit in this trade for days and let the market continue higher. That's why liquidation breaks can be so strong. They give those swing traders a chance to get a good position. So once again, I am back in the same position I was when we opened this morning. I see it bullish as the fact that value is overlapping to higher today and we're back up in the spike. I'm looking to see, can we get above yesterday's high, find support to fill the gap to 
Jesus, look at that tick. <laughs> negative 1,000, positive 1,000, back down to negative 1,000. The Shaw, every time Papa speaks, I imagine him dressed like Elvis. I'm not sure I get that one. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. John Fletcher, appreciate it, brother. <laughs> now, design now this I could actually get behind. I can see I can see him as wearing a thong under his suit. And like he's one of those people that pays like dominatrixes. To like hurt him. Powerful men are the ones that are always into that stuff. Tie me up like a dog and tell me what to do. Raise the interest rate by 75 basis points. Yes, mistress. Yes. Scooball, hmm, buyers? Yeah. I still see this as buyers. And it's not the buyers right now that I'm worried about or thinking about. It was the buyers down here. These are the buyers that are important because they're not going to take profits. And if those buyers don't take profits and new buyers step in, well, the market can keep going. Seven seven seven. They already took profits. Uh, I would disagree. There's a great story. I've I mentioned this like ten thousand times on this channel, so I apologize if you've heard this before. Uh, but there's a great story uh, in the book um, "Unknown Market Wizards," uh, where this guy talks about you know he works for a for a firm, and his whole job is basically events like today, right? When there's going to be a big catalyst news event that's going to cause a very quick, um, 
you know, abrupt change in the market, that's what he trades. That's all he trades. So he literally sits around for months taking no trades, just waiting for one of these big events to happen. But he's completely prepared. He's researched it. He knows what are the, the highest probabilities of what, you know, the, the Fed chair is probably going to say, how the market's going to react, this and that. And then he has a hundred million dollar account size that he trades with. And so what he does is he literally takes a hundred, sorry, not a hundred thousand, hundred million, a hundred million dollars worth of capital, puts it in the market and takes it back out minutes later. It's, it's absolutely insane. So a case like that today would literally be like, he would have seen that as a liquidation break. He would have bought himself, you know, a hundred million dollars worth of contracts in here and then taken profits up here and booked himself, you know, whatever million dollars worth of profits or whatever, um, in 20 minutes. And that's how he trades. So I, I, I know what you're saying and there's definitely a very real chance that some of that is taking place. Certainly. Um, but I would assume that there were some swing traders in there and they've got no reason to take profits. Now they got a trend on the daily. They're pushing their way back up into a previous balance area, right? We get back up into here instantly. The odds increase. We're heading all the way up to there. I mean, there's no reason to exit along if you got in down here. No reason at all. If you're a swing trader. <laughs> Cortman trade for Jesus is a day trading software program that runs on Ninja trader and can also be used as a standalone trading system. Is it effective? <laughs> and what do they trade? All right. Well, I'm back to neutral here. I still feel bullish on the day. I do not believe this is the high of the day. I think we're going to head up there and start one time framing higher. But previous support becoming resistance is bearish to see. So I'm forced to go back to a neutral stance here, meaning I don't see an entry to go long, even though I think the market is going higher. I'll need to wait until we establish good, strong support. Warren, yeah, dude, read Unknown Market Wizards. It's the best of all of them, in my opinion, for retail traders because it's it's about retail mostly. There are a few like um, institutional type of traders in there, but it's mostly just retail like you and I. People who had to figure out, that's the other cool thing about it is every single trader is like completely different from the others. So you really get to understand how you have to develop a system that is completely engineered specifically for you.
Uh, Kathy, do you think it's possible for you to put the bullish banner when the market starts going down instead of going up? Uh, when the market is going down instead of going up. Sometimes if I'm waiting for something, like if I'm, you know, for example, um, if the market pushes above the, the high from yesterday and then it comes back down and finds support, I would put up a, a green banner, um, even though the market was going down. But it wouldn't really be while it's going down. It would be when it's getting support and ready to start going up. I like to trade with momentum, not against it. So what you're talking about, those are called innovators. So a great example is that liquidation break that we just had, right? So I knew that was a liquidation break from the moment it started. Um, so that told me that the highest probability, Jesus, what's going on with my computer? Um, that told me that the highest probability was that the market was gonna sell off and then come right back up. I also knew that we had all those weak references that needed repair on the way down, right? So I would be willing to short with the momentum to, to repair those weak references on the way down because I'm going with the trend, but I would not try to catch the falling knife. I wouldn't try to buy the low, even though I assumed that we were putting in a low down here and that we were gonna come back up, I still wouldn't buy it because then I'd have to be an innovator. I would have had to know I'm right for sure before it was proven to me. And I just don't like to trade like that. So in that moment, even though I think the market is going to find support and turn around and head back up, I'm not looking for a long trade at all. I'm instead waiting to see when it does that, does it get resistance? Do we get new sellers and then I get short? Or if like today we don't get resistance and we push right back up into the range, well, then I get bullish. Scooball says, I think it could be hard to read today, not like yesterday. Yeah, I definitely didn't think we'd be back down here. This is a bit of a surprise to me. This means I'm wrong on my thesis of swing traders buying because they obviously had to have taken profits to get back down here. So it's a tricky read. But Charles, don't you feel bearish? I mean, look at that. Don't you feel bearish? Nope, I don't. Higher high, higher low, and value higher is an indication that this is just price advertising right now. They're trying to get the market to get bearish and go short. They're trying to break the momentum. But I trade value, not price. 
So they're going to have to change the value area to convince me they're going lower. Or break yesterday's low. Dude, liquidation 2.0. That's bearish. <laughs> Liquidated these buyers, brought in new ones. Now we're liquidating the new ones again. So I get bearish if we break yesterday's low at 41.47.50. Greg H., if you get 100 likes, will you stay for a few more hours? <laughs> no, I got to roll. Got to go hang out with the cool kids. Speaking of which, it's almost time, actually. Um, so for those of you that have not heard, I will be going on vacation next week. So I will be gone all week next week. No live streams. Uh, I'm still going to try to post on Twitter, um, you know, or in the discord if I see something interesting. Um, but probably pretty, I'll be pretty inactive. Um, so the market is closed the following Monday, the Monday after next uh, for our three day weekend holiday. So I will be back on that Tuesday. And I look forward to seeing you all then. It's a great chance. If you haven't, please consider taking that uh, market profile course that I have listed in the uh, description below. This week will be a great chance for you to start to exercise your own skills at reading the uh, two-way auction. All right. Jesus Christ, this is bearish. So we broke yesterday's low. That's bearish. We're also one time framing lower. That's bearish. So now we've got the next set of weakness, same as we did earlier. We're going to start monitoring for continuation lower. When they repair this weak M period low, is that enough for them to reverse and head back up? If not, we target this one, then this one, then this one, and so on and so forth until they finally bring in enough buyers to reverse this thing. This is bearish. This is someone large liquidating. All right. And with that, I bid you all farewell. Thank you so much. And I will see you 
in two weeks. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. I'll miss you. I'm going to miss you. <laughs>